So recall that the Earth is not perfectly still. In fact, it rotates with some velocity about an axis. So here we have the Earth, here we have the axis, and the Earth rotates about this axis. Now, we want to ask and answer the following two questions. How does the rotation of the Earth affect the gravitational constant G? And how does the rotation of the Earth affect the weight of an object? So let's begin by making the assumption that the Earth is a perfect sphere. So that basically implies that the radius at any given point is exactly the same. It's equal to 6,380,000 meters. So we have no bulging at the equators. So let's suppose we take a person and place the person at the pole of our Earth. So let's say we place a person onto a scale at the North Pole, as shown here. So we have the person, the scale, and the North Pole. So we want to examine what the gravitational constant is and what the weight of the object is. So the object is standing on a scale and we want to ask what are the forces acting on the person along the y-axis if we choose the axis to be the y-axis. So we have two forces acting on the person. We have the force of gravity which is acting downward. Let's choose that to be the positive direction. And we have the normal force the force created by the scale on the person that's pointing in the opposite direction of the force of gravity. So it's acting along the negative direction. So we have two forces acting on the object. So according to the second law of motion, we have the net force acting on the object is simply the sum of these two forces. So we have the force of gravity minus the normal force. Now notice as the Earth rotates, it's not actually rotating at these two ends, at the poles. So that means the person does not have a centripetal acceleration at the poles. So that means this equals m times zero because our a is zero, so this equals zero. So we can rearrange this equation and we find that the gravitational force is equal to the normal force. So mg times, or mg is equal to mg. The masses are identical, we cancel the masses out, and g equals g. So that means our gravitational constant at the poles is simply 9.80 meters per second squared. And the weight of the object at the poles is simply m times g, our gravitational constant. Now, what about if we take the same person and the same scale and place him on one of the equators? So let's, let's say we place him here. So here's our person standing on a scale at the equator. So now notice our Earth is in fact rotating. And because the Earth is rotating at the equators, the person and the scale is also rotating. So the velocity at this exact point points out of the board and the object is accelerating radially and that points towards the center of the Earth. So now we have the object that is in fact accelerating. So if we take the same sum, because at this point we have the same exact forces acting on the object, but now these forces are acting along the x-axis. So let's choose going this way to be positive, going backwards to be negative. So the force of gravity acting in this direction, pulling down on the person, and the normal force created by the scale on the person acting in the opposite direction. So now if we sum up all the forces, we see that Fg minus the normal force is equal to m times a, where a is our radial or centripetal acceleration of the earth as well as of the person. So, Recall that radial acceleration is equal to the velocity squared divided by r. So that means we can replace this with mv squared divided by r. Now, what exactly is the velocity of our Earth? What is the velocity of the object found at the equator? So let's recall what the frequency of the Earth is. The frequency is one revolution, one full revolution per day. And there are 24 hours in a day, so that means the frequency is one revolution per 24 hours. So let's convert this to uh, seconds, and we simply multiply the bottom by 
300 or 3600 and we get 1 over 86,400 seconds. So this is the frequency. Now, what about the velocity? Well, the velocity is given by taking the circumference of our circle of our Earth and multiplying that by our frequency. So, 2 times pi times r, where r is the radius of the circle. So, r is simply 6,380,000 meters. So, we plug that into there and we multiply by the frequency and we get a velocity of 464 meters per second. So, this is the velocity of the object found at the equator on the Earth. So now, let's rearrange this equation. So we want to find what the normal force is. So the normal force, after we arrange this, is equal to mass times g minus mass times v squared divided by r. So this is the weight of the person found at the equator and notice that it's slightly less at the equator than at the North Pole. It's less by this amount. So when the person is standing at the poles, we see that our force, the gravitational force, is equal to the normal force. But at one of the equators, on the equator, we have the following formula, so it's slightly less. What about our gravitational constant g? Well, let's rearrange our equation, or actually let's take this equation and let's rewrite these guys as mg minus mg. Now notice, these two g's are not exactly the same. This g refers to 9.80 meters per second squared. But this g is the g we're looking for. We want to find this g. So notice m appears on every single uh, term, so we can cancel the m's out. And we see that g minus g prime, or the change in g, is equal to v squared divided by r. So let's plug in our velocity, and let's plug in our radius, and we see that the change in our gravitational constant between the poles and the equator is 0.0337 meters per second squared. So there is in fact a difference in the gravitational constant if you compare it at the pole and at the equator and the difference is given by this magnitude. So